In today's video, we're taking on a user by the name of Roblox Days Over. And anyways, as you can see by their setup, they actually have a pretty intimidating team. Um, so like, you know, Manaphy and Hoopa are pretty devastating wall breakers in the competitive scene when you don't come prepared for them. And then he also has Excadrill, which, uh, which can be scary. Tyranitar, which is a pretty good tank, although I'm not too scared of it because my team isn't too weak to it. Neither is Gyarados really much of a, a threat. And then there's also Garchomp, which can be scary, but it's also not too bad. So anyways, I leave it Medicham because Medicham seems to have a relatively good matchup against every Pokemon there. And since there isn't really a Ghost type, I can freely go for a high jump kick to my heart's desire. So anyways, uh, he leads with his Garchomp, which is a bit intimidating to me because, you know, Ruskin is an ability Garchomp gets that could be inconvenient if I try to go for a fake out on him. Although, really, to get Medicham into Mega Form safely, you really do need to go for the fake out. So, you know, that's what I've decided to lead with. And, um, another problem is Garchomp does outspeed. So, if he has a fully PvP trained Garchomp, he could outspeed and potentially do massive damage with his Earthquake. It should hit like a truck. Although, the good thing about Garchomp is that we have a four times effective Ice Punch which will shred right through it, so you know, that's that. So anyways, I get off the Mega Evolution and he stays in, which is good news because he gets some free chip damage off. And luckily for us, he does not have the rough skin ability, but instead he actually has a Mega Guard Chomp. And I'm glad I went for Fake Out here because that way we are able to shut down um, him getting the Mega Evolution speed, or I mean his pre-Mega Evolution speed in the first turn. So we're gonna be able to outspeed him now since it's been two turns, if that makes sense, because, you know, this game, once again, runs on a Gen 6 mechanic where you use your pre-mega speed, so, you know, that's that. So anyways, I land the Ice Punch, and it's enough to one-shot the Guard Chomp, which is good news, but really, it's not a surprise, because, um, Medicham is probably the second hardest-hitting Pokemon here in the Brick Bronze meta, other than, like, you know, Uber Pokemon, so, you know, nothing ever wants to really stay in and get blasted by it, so, you know, that's that. But, like, the, the really best way to answer Medicham is either with Focus Sash, something that can hit hard, or something that outspeeds and knocks out. But he goes into Excadrill here, thinking I might have a Focus Sash, but it doesn't. So it's another free sacrifice to Medicham. I don't know why he sacked the Excadrill like that, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to complain. So, next up, he goes into Gyarados, gets off the Intimidate. So, you know, I, I figured, you know, I probably should switch out here. So although we could probably still two-shot it with Zen Headbutt, I don't think it's a good idea. You know, especially because Medichan could probably shred through the rest of his team if given the right, you know, um, I guess, circumstances. So anyways, I decided to go into Togekiss here because um, I want to get the T-Wave on him. And once I get the T-Wave on this Gyarados, his Dragon Dance will no longer be as effective. And then, he, you know, it's going to be pretty much shut down. So... On this turn though, unfortunately, he decides to switch out into his Hoopa, which is probably his most scary Pokemon, i say, in this battle because, um, you know, it can do dangerous damage. Although, luckily, I do have Tyranitar, which resists most of his attacks. And, and now, I, of course, you know, he might have Focus Blast, although that's not on every Hoopa Unbound, especially in the PB, or especially in the PBB Hoopa Unbound. A lot of people don't really have that type of moveset on it so anyways i go into um tyranitar here because you know it resists both stabs and it has the assault vest which will help it easily eat up any hits that hoopa has but luckily on this turn he gets paralyzed which is great especially because i get some additional chip damage from the sandstorm on the hoopa so here i go for the rock slide i figured i may as well just get some raw damage off on the hoopa and you know i'm really i could have also gone for crunch i I just keep forgetting Koopa's typing, it's, it's part Psychic, so it would take neutral damage, and Crunch is the, the better move to toss out, given the circumstance, but you know, Rock Slide worked out pretty well there too. So anyways, with the Sandstorm damage, he gets into yellow HP, and I figured he's probably expecting me to switch out, and he's probably going to go for Tail Glow, so I'm going to go for Rock Slide expecting that, and of course, he did go for Tail Glow, so, you know, for that reason, his Mana Fee was taken down, especially because of the chip damage, which is great, so you never... You want to be careful with Tyranitar, and even if he did attack, Man Tyranitar could easily take um, any of Manaphy's hits because it's just that much of a wall, so that's why I kind of like using it sometimes. But, you know, my, my, my only thing I don't like about it is just it doesn't really hit too hard. 
or maybe it's because of the set I'm running, but like that doesn't make it so fun to use. But anyways, I go into top specs here on the Gyarados, expecting a water move this time, and you know, that worked out. And even if you went for Dragon Dance, it would still be fine because I have Haze, and I don't think he really has much coverage on this Gyarados, seeing that he would switch out from the Togekiss, and you know, the reason that says something is because most people would have Ice Fang, and they would be prompted to attack if they had that opportunity, so I figured he didn't have much coverage, and that seemed to be right because he switched back into Hoopa while I went into Togekiss. And really, this wasn't too bad because, you know, I could just, I could attack this and I could afford to take uh, a couple of hits from this Hoopa. And, you know, I resist his dark type attacks too, so that's the benefit. So I went for Air Slash and I went for another dose. I gave him another Air Slash. And, you know, you don't want to, you, you never want to be in this situation because Air Slash, Serene Grace, and Paralysis are going to make you unable to attack. But, you know, I figured I didn't want to do it to this guy, so I switched out into Tyranitar. You know, I really don't like the strategy where you have to spam Air Slash, it's just, it's not fun. Your opponent is no longer even playing the game, so I go into Tyranitar here on the, on the Hoopa, and he goes for Trick Room and then Wonder Room. I'm not really sure what this type of strategy is, but you know, it worked out because um, although I do lose my special defense in return for better defense, it doesn't really matter because this Hoopa is still not going to one-shot me because he doesn't have any good moves against my Tyranitar, so you know, this would be a free KO. And anyways, I make the foolish move of going for Earthquake here. I really couldn't have just gone for Crunch. Like, I, I don't know why I went for Earthquake. I mean, I, was, I think it was because I was scared of the Rock Slide missing. I thought that he would resist Crunch. So I, when I see this, I look at it I, and I think of a Dark type rather than a Dark and Psychic type. I, I just keep messing up that type. So, you know, that was that was a mistake. You would want to go for Crunch in this situation. Or even Rock Slide. Rock Slide would have still worked out, especially against this Gyarados. So, you know, of course the Earthquake doesn't do anything and he gets out to Intimidate, which is a bit annoying. So anyways, the Sandstorm does, you know, help out quite a bit though, is it does, you know, make this Gyarados a little bit less ineffective because of the, you know, effects of the, the chip damage. But, um, you know, because he set up Trick Room, I figured, you know, I may as well stay in here, especially because he, has, he set up not only Trick Room, but Wonder Room too. So my defense was now going to be monstrously high, so I was like, why should I switch out? He set it up perfectly for my Tyranitar. So the only thing I don't know um, why I did was the, the choice of using Crunch over Rock Slide because really Rock Slide would have given me a lot more um, a lot more damage output but for some reason I thought that Crunch would work out. I guess it's because I was thinking I should have gone Crunch rather than Earthquake on the previous turn. You know this this was just uh, this was confusing. But I guess my brain wasn't working correctly. So anyways I go for Crunch again and he goes into Tyranitar. Which is fine because you know Tyranitar can't really do much back to my Tyranitar. And in most cases, you know, the best he can do is Earthquake, and that's not gonna do anything. Tyranitar really doesn't hit too hard, surprisingly. I, I'm surprised I'm saying it, but that's just the reality. Anyways, I go into Sizer and I figure, you know, now I can win the game because you know Tyranitar is his last Pokemon that you know he revealed. And his Hoopa is at low HP and so is his Gyarados. So I decided that Bullet Punch would be enough to, you know, take home this victory. Especially because the Hoopa might outspeed me, so you know, Bull Punch would ensure that I would get the speed advantage over him. And because Hoopa doesn't have good defense, it's probably gonna get knocked out even after an Intimidate. Tyranitar would probably get one shotted if it was at neutral, and you know, it would be two shotted with Intimidate. And Gyarados is not taking a Bullet Punch even with the Intimidate nerf on Sizer, so you know, that was that was all I needed to do to checkmate this guy. So, anyways, what, for whatever reason though, he does take a lot of time here. Um, thinking about it, <laughs> I mean, you could just go into Gyarados, like, I don't know why cried so much top, but, you know, the Bullet Punch is enough to dispatch the Gyarados, which is great news for me, and, you know, now, now Gyarados is out of the game, and his Hoopa and Tyranitar are the last Pokemon left, and they are basically, um, useless against my team, so, you know, Tyranitar, it actually, it takes the, the first hit pretty well, but it's still, you know, not even that impressive, because this is a negative one sizer using a priority move and he goes for earthquake which you know doesn't really do much to sizer i mean it brings me to yellow or i mean orange but you know that's not really much of a big deal especially because i'm going to be out speeding and knocking everything else out so uh here he takes a lot more time to really contemplate uh you know i don't, I don't even know so he just goes out I don't, I don't know why he was taking time for that one but you know it is what it is sandstorms up but luckily because of our part steel typing we're not affected then he goes into hoopa which is at, you know, orange HP, which is a dangerous number. And, you know, I finish him off and I win the game. So yeah, that is GG.
good battle.